Hi, my name is Doug Lundgren, AKC Vice President of Companion and Performance Events. The American Kennel Club sanctions more than 1,600 field events per year. Our field trials and our hunting tests are designed to allow the sporting breeds to showcase the abilities for which they were developed and to provide you an opportunity to spend an enjoyable day in the field with your dog. The purpose of this video is to offer guidelines in order to promote gun safety at these events. There are four sections in this video. The first covers general gun safety procedures that apply to all events. The next three sections cover gunning practices and situations that are specific to retrievers, pointing breeds, and spaniels. Please watch this video from start to finish and help improve safety at your AKC event. The AKC recommends all clubs review gun safety rules published by a recognized organization. The following recommendations are meant as guidelines and as supplements to your club's full safety policies and procedures. Always keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction. When moving from your vehicle to the field, guns should be cased or pointed downward and unloaded. When in the field, a loaded gun should be pointed in a safe direction. Never run with a loaded gun. A gun should not be loaded until absolutely necessary. Be sure of what is beyond your target. Protective gear is important. Ear and eye protective gear is recommended. Blaze orange outerwear is required for all pointing and spaniel events. It should be obvious that alcohol and gunning do not mix. The AKC provides the following general guidelines for assisting clubs in promoting safety. The event committee is ultimately responsible for the selection of the gunners. AKC field events involve participants with a wide range of knowledge regarding safe conduct in the field. Only experienced gunners should be used at AKC events. AKC events are not the place to learn how to shoot. The judges are empowered to stop any action that they deem unsafe and to remove a gunner that they feel is not following safe gunning practices. Handlers never shoot live ammunition. Gunners shooting live ammunition must be 21 years of age or older. Gunners shooting popper loads must be at least 16 years old. Break open shotguns are required or recommended in all events. At pointing breed and spaniel events where live ammunition is used, everyone in the field must wear an outer article that is blaze orange. An orange hat by itself is not sufficient. As to how much orange is required, clubs should follow the hunting regulations of the state where the event is being held. The gunner has the ultimate responsibility for the safety of the shot. If there is any doubt, don't shoot. During setup, gunners should point out safety concerns to the judges. Gunners should be aware of government regulations on the type of shot allowed at the event location. Hi, Doug Lundgren here for the American Kennel Club. Today we are in Alabama, where the Retriever Master Nationals will soon be held. This chapter covers important recommendations for gunning safety at Retriever events. We will cover two types of gun safety situations pertaining to Retriever events. The first involves shooting at dead bird stations, and the second covers shooting at live flyers. If the station has only one person throwing and gunning, it is recommended that a popper gun stand be used. In dead bird situations, it is preferred to have one thrower and one gunner. This is the safest setup. Guns up! Gunners load only when the judges signal guns up. 25 to line, please.
150. Popper setups should be taken seriously. They can be very dangerous and have devastating effects. In shooting live flyers, the preferred situation is one thrower and two gunners. Proper positioning is an important safety element. Gunners stand slightly in front and approximately five steps to each side of the launcher or thrower. Make sure you establish position early and compensate for steps the thrower takes when tossing the bird. Gunners load only when judges signal guns up. Gunners up! Gunners should not fire shots at birds which are out of range. Prior to retiring and leaving the field, gunners should always unload their firearms. Remember, even the simplest mistakes can create unfortunate events. Many times, unusual situations present themselves at events. Here are some examples and rules to follow to create a safer event. If the bird is missed in the initial volley, do not shoot returning birds. When there is a crippled bird on land or water, gunners should follow birds to the ground and fire again if a bird is not dead, unless instructed by the judges to do otherwise. Shooting live ammunition from a boat is not recommended. Following these safety steps can help create a fun and safer experience for the people and dogs at your event. Hi, Doug Lundgren here for the American Kennel Club. Today we're in Wisconsin, at a location where many pointing breed field events are held. So let's review some of the safety features of pointing breed events. This chapter covers gun safety at pointing breed events. These safety tips cover gunning practices for field trials and hunting tests. This chapter is broken into three sections. Approach and positioning, the shot, and after the shot. How the gunner approaches end positions for a shooting situation is important. In callback situations, two gunners should accompany a handler. When gunning occurs on course or in the bird field, one gunner should accompany each handler. The breech of the gun should be closed just prior to starting to move forward with the handler. As the gunner is moving forward, he or she should be noting the location of the gallery, the judges, bracemate, and other objects of concern in the area of the find. If necessary, the gunner may ask the gallery to bunch up more or move to a different location. Gunners should walk up to any shooting situation with the handler approximately 10 yards to the side. Once to the pointing dog, the gunner should stand slightly in front of the handler. The wind and sun should be a consideration when the gunner takes position. The gunner should not flush the bird. Flushing the bird is the handler's responsibility. Gunners should not take the safety off until mounting the gun to shoot. In pointing breed events, when two gunners are involved, the general rule is the gunner closest to the bird when it is at the appropriate distance for firing is the primary gunner. This is the safest approach for the event. The second gunner should shoot only if necessary. Gunners need to take precaution and not shoot too quickly. Birds should be shot at a distance that will provide the dog a decent retrieving opportunity. If a judge feels a gunner is firing too quickly or waiting too long to fire, 
the judge should inform the gunner to change his practice. After the shot, the gunner should wait quietly with the gun pointed upward until the dog has passed by on his or her way to finishing the retrieve. Once the dog has passed the gunner, the gunner should point the gun downward, unload, and move to a location behind the handler. Once the retrieve is completed, the gunner should take the bird from the handler and place it in his hunting vest. Field events can always present some unusual situations. Acting responsibly will help the event maintain a high level of safety. When encountering a running bird, the gunner should move with the handler. Always be aware of the location of the other gunner and never run while carrying a loaded gun. Sometimes it's necessary to throw a live bird. Thrown birds can create a difficult shot since they often are only in the air a short time. Handlers can help this situation by not surprising the gunner and by throwing the bird forward at a 45 degree angle off the ground. When multiple birds are encountered on a flush, shoot only one bird. Never shoot live fire on a wild flush. Never shoot if a breaking dog flushes the bird. Blank guns should be taken seriously. The consequences of improper handling of a blank gun can be devastating. Don't hold a blank gun next to an object when firing. A 32 caliber blank gun is the largest allowed in pointing dog events. Hi, I'm Doug Lundgren and this is Tom Meyer, AKC Spaniel Field Rep. This next chapter covers gun safety at Spaniel events. Gunning practices at Spaniel field trials and hunting tests are not the same. Tom, could you please explain some of the differences? Sure. Um, the hunt test program is a little bit different just because uh, we've, we've only got one dog running at a time. Preferably, we set the guns up probably 10 or 15 yards uh, to, the, to the right and the left of the handler and one step back. Let's just start with a master, for instance. Presumably, a good retrieve in the master hunt test is, is something in excess of 30 yards. So, most probably there'll be nothing shot in a lesser distance than that. Um, the gunners are, are put in a position by the judges. Um, they're, they're ones that really control where they should be, so they're not out way too wide. One of the things that happens is uh, the, the gunner gets excited about where the bird is versus where the dog is, and, and, and cross shooting happens on occasion. Uh, this should be uh, looked at uh, and, and suggested by the judges that um, you know, that's not safe and so we have to concentrate on that. And so I've, what I've done is I've, I've pretty much at, at my um, seminars uh, I've talked about the shooting lanes. Uh, basically, um, the bird should be shot 20 to 30 yards in front of the dog. Uh, the gunner that is the uh, probably the closest and, and within that 30 yard range will be the primary shooter. In the eventuality that it's unsafe for various reasons, whether there are bird planters out there or it's too close to the dog, uh, then the other gunner is to, is to step in. Um, and this is a conversation that the, judge, or the gunners must have with themselves uh, as to what they feel is safe and where they're comfortable. Um, one of the things that is important for the, for the two gunners is that never should they shoot behind them. Uh, the acceptable safety practice would be basically at a 90 degree angle from the front of the course. So what happens when the, the dog encounters a running bird? Well in the master, uh, again, 
Uh, it says in the rule books that uh, if the dog is uh, taking a runner and getting out of uh, gun range, it's expected that the handler can stop the dog uh, and uh, proceed uh, up the course and then release the dog uh, so that uh, the bird can be shot. So it's expected that, that the uh, master dog is trained at a level that it will stop on the whistle uh, when pursuing a moving bird. Now a running bird or a moving bird in the junior and senior, for instance, is a little bit more difficult and takes a little more diligence on the handler's part and the gunner's part in that you don't run after a, a dog that is uh, chasing a, a running bird. What about when the multiple birds flush at the same time? Uh, in multiple birds, uh, dual flush, which sometimes happens, we, we use chucker, we use uh, pheasant. The chucker sometimes will, will cubby up and so you'll have two flushes at one time. And what the sort of the standard rule is, if, if you're shooting for the master dog, for instance, and if it's possible to shoot both birds, that would be acceptable. And then the judges can determine which one or both if they're going to retrieve them. Uh, in the senior or junior, again, that's a little bit different. If you were having multiple flush, you just knock down whichever one is the closest or the, or the safest shot. What about a wild flush situation where the bird just takes off on his own? It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, Again, the handlers and, and or the handler should be aware, uh, particularly the master, that if, if the dog is aware of the bird flushing, it is expected to stop uh, on, a, on at least a wing, a, a bird that's in, uh, in flight. But uh, the gunners are instructed to shoot the bird unless instructed otherwise uh, by the judges. So that describes the hunt test situation. Now, if we move to a field trial, what's the difference? Well, the difference is you got, you're got you running a brace of dogs instead of singly as, as in the hunt test. So it takes a little more coordination on the, the gun team. You've got a center gunner and you've got two wing gunners. Again, the wing gunner is probably going to be set up 10 or 15 yards to the outside of the, hand, the two handlers. You've got two handlers going down, the two handlers, two dogs going down the field. You've got the center line. Uh, the dogs uh, are responsible for whatever birds happen on their respective courses. Um, the, uh, uh, the shooting lanes are somewhat different uh, because you've got uh, where you've got the dogs going at, at this course. Uh, they may not, the handler and, and dogs may not be at the same level. They might be further ahead because of speed or taking out a moving bird. So uh, there's, you know, sort of the accepted um, Lane is a 45 degree angle down the center for the center gun. He's got, you know, he's got to cover you know, somewhat the wings if, if, if it should happen to be. The, the wing guns are going to shoot, uh, you know, say at a 90 degree or I think the, um, the accepted uh, or as far as the Spaniel field trial is a 30 degree angle back. So you would have the same uh, 45 degree angle to the center over the dog and on both sides, right and left wing. And sometimes, depending on if the course is winding through the field, that 30 degrees has got to be paid a lot of attention to. Because you got, so the gunners you will always see will be turning around, looking back, determining who's behind them. And many times when you've got two dogs running down the field and they're, they're quartering, covering their course, the, the center gunner, while he is trying to, to make sure that a shot is made prior to it getting onto the other side, uh, interfering with the, uh, the other dog if it were shot, um, he's not, while it's, he's the closest to it, it's not necessarily his shot. So you may have a bird that'll get up for the left side, right in front of the left gunner as a for instance, fly all the way across the course um, through, through both judges and both handlers and end up on the far side and the, our, the outside gunner will, will, will shoot it and, and knock it down if it's a, again a safe shot. So the dog, while he's steady to shot and wing, uh, he has to go all the way across to find that bird, should he be sent. So it gets to be a little confusing. So, so the, you know, we talk about a 45 degree angle on both sides as far as safe. Um, with the dogs moving back and forth, that varies all the time. Okay. So field trial, you have two dogs, three gunners, 
And because of that, there's a potential for more complicated situations. Yes, yes. And part of it, you know, and you've got, of course, the marshal in both cases. You've got a marshal in the hunt test and you've got a marshal in the, in the field trial. And, and he or she is basically responsible for keeping the gallery close. And that's ever important. So you don't have people just walking in wherever they Correct. feel like. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And the other thing is that obviously um, we're in blaze orange and, and everybody in the field is expected to be in blaze orange. Right. One of the final things is, is if a bird should fly overhead, uh, as far as the, uh, a wing gunner is concerned, he will always turn, uh, at, again at port arms, away from the gallery, never turn towards the gallery and to try to make a safe shot. Okay, good. In this chapter, we cover some safety practices for spaniel events. These include approach and positioning, the shot, and after the shot. In field trials, three gunners accompany the handlers, a center gunner and two wing gunners. In hunting tests, two wing gunners are used. Gunners should normally position themselves 10 to 15 yards to each side and one step behind the handler. As a matter of safety in field trials, the judges should attempt to maintain a parallel beat. Guns should be carried open until the dog is released from the line. Once loaded, guns should be carried with barrels up and pointed in a safe direction. Gunners should constantly be alert to the location of the handlers, judges, other gunners, the gallery, and other objects of concern in the area of the find. The gallery is under the control of the field marshal and must remain tightly grouped. In shooting situations, the general rule is the gunner closest to the bird when it is at the appropriate distance for firing is the primary gunner. Cross-shooting should be avoided except when the primary gunner has an unsafe shot. Don't shoot too quickly. Birds should be shot at a minimum distance of 25 to 30 yards in order to provide the dog a respectable retrieve. If a judge feels a gunner is firing too quickly or waiting too long to fire, he should inform both the gun captain and gunner that this practice needs to change. The second gunner should shoot only if necessary. No shot should be fired while a dog is on a retrieve. No bird should be shot over the gallery. After the shot, the gunner should wait quietly with the gun pointed upward until the dog is sent for the retrieve. Then, the gunner should point the gun downward break open the gun and quietly step aside to give the handler and judge a full view of the dog. On the dog's return, the gunner may reload. As with most hunting events, some unusual situations can occur. Here are some tips on how to handle some common occurrences that fall into this category. When encountering a running bird in a hunting test, the gunners move with the handler. In field trials, the wing gunner on the side where the dog first encountered the bird will move with the handler, keeping himself in position to take a safe shot when the bird is flushed. When encountering multiple birds, gunners should make every attempt to shoot multiple birds, unless instructed otherwise by the judges. When encountering a wild flush, flushes on course in front of the handler and gunner should be shot unless instructed otherwise by the judges. Let's review some of the most important gun safety rules that apply to all AKC events. Safety at any AKC event should be the number one priority. As previously mentioned, Three safety tips that should be practiced at every AKC event are 
Always keep the muzzle of the gun pointed in a safe direction. A gun should not be loaded until absolutely necessary. Be sure of what is beyond your target. The discharge of firearms is an important element of AKC field events. Consideration of the guidelines provided in this video, along with experienced gunners and common sense, should provide many safe and enjoyable days in the field for you and your dog.